How's it going guys? Uh, welcome back to another video. I just finished my exam, uh, last one, and I'm ready to freaking get out of London. So, um, looking at the charts though, um, we can bring it back. I, I just want to talk to you guys about some things, about price targets, and why I think that CleanSpark and Mara are going to get some, some, some significant price target upgrades. Uh, the trend of money and, and the flow of money ha has been into Bitcoin. And what we have seen with these ETFs is there's been a consistent flow of equity and value into into Bitcoin um, since the ETFs have been approved, which, which has been huge. And come April, when we shock the supply, when, when the supply roughly uh, halves uh, that comes on in the market, right? Because you have people, when, when the price goes up a lot, you have more people wanting to sell because they want to take profit. Um, as well as the reason why the price went up, well, there's a lot of buyers, there's new value, new growth, right? So um, roughly 50%, we can say that that the supply shock of Bitcoin and with this consistent um, inflow of money looks very good. And what I love to see is when a stock starts gapping, you don't really like this. Um, in terms of gap, 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 eventually there's gonna be a pullback. And, and kind of what we've seen is almost like a bull flag breakout, bull flag breakout, bull flag breakout, right? Um, and I love this chart here. I I, I just, CleanSpark is, is, I believe in my opinion, a more overvalued company than Marathon Digital. If you were to con uh, compare the prices of the two companies, how much Exa hash and how much Bitcoin they have on their balance sheet, CleanSpark is a very evidently more overvalued, more momentous play. Um, However, because I'm so bullish on Bitcoin and because I'm bullish on these miners in general, like I believe that they're going to soar through these price targets no matter what. Um, I have given this my, my, my price target of this wave up, which I believe is going to consist throughout February into early March is I believe 23.65. And, and when, we, when we look at it on the weekly, this is where it kind of topped and has been support. This is the next resistance level. This is gonna be in the next week, it's gonna hit 23.65. Um, you can see the bull flag, very beautiful above $18. We look very, very bullish. The momentum is well in our favor. Uh, things are looking very, very good for CleanSpark. And same thing with Marathon in, in terms of almost like a bull flag once again. And these companies just depends on if there's more buyers, more sellers. But the overall trend, there was a momentous downswing. We are converging to a momentous upswing. February 28th is um, Marathon Digital's earnings, which I, I'm super hyped for because because of what CleanSpark did, they completely crushed it, as well as Marathon Digital is likely going to crush it. And I, and I wanna talk to you guys about earnings because I did play an earnings call. I wanna talk to you about some of this stuff, but earnings are so important because they forecast growth. And what forecasted growth means is a trend. And st the stock will gap because it's like now a momentous gap up or gap down in terms of this is the trend. We like the earnings, we didn't like the earnings. Um, but the most important part is that over time there's going to be this flow of money. And the break point on Marathon Digital is just absolutely ridiculous. And really when, when we zoom, we whip out the weekly, we zoom back out. Uh, I believe that this next this next wave, which I believe is going to take place before the halving, I, I, I'm still confident that we have a a really big run up before the halving with everyone expecting this supply shock. And I believe we get a sell the news event just like we did with the ETF. Um, I'm obviously not gonna sell out of my whole position. That's just stupid. There's, there's no need to risk that. But right about here is where you can very evidently see this is like your, your key point. And that's right around the $40 mark. Um, it, it's acted as a level of support and resistance many times without the stock. And I know that there's more shares now than there used to be. But but when we zoom back into the weekly, um, this is a, a very potential leg up in towards 40. It, it's essentially 30 bucks to, to 40. It's a 33% increase. Um, so you're looking at about a 40% increase from right now, from right here, which is very reasonable for the amount of momentum that this stock can bring. Um, to, to the market. And, and one other thing I'm gonna talk to you guys about is Coinbase. I, I happened to buy a call, I bought a call for next week, 
Um, I bought it at 165, it cost me about 13 bucks and it's trading for about $35 right now. So it's about a quick $2,000 gain. I did lose $700 on SMCI, but I'll talk to you guys about that because that could have made $5,000. I just happened to be writing an exam and I, like the exam started at 9.30 and, and I finished at like 11. So I, I come out of the exam, I open up my phone, I see my stocks are up, I'm a happy man, right? Um, but look at this breakout in terms of, I'm gonna delete these, I just had been throwing on some lines and and kind of charting, but this breakout is just absolutely ridiculous. You can see that it heavily resisted up at 188, we fell through it and bounced and we're holding above it. 193 breakout zone, um, what I really expect is I'm expecting the stock to hit 200 by no less than next week. Um, why? Well, 200 happens to be a whole number. It's very reasonable for it to move up a few percent. And the momentous swing, look at what we've seen with these crypto stocks. Huge momentous swings up, huge momentous swings down. I expect no less than another big momentous swing up um, with a, a retracement in towards late March. I, I've been saying this over my past couple of videos and I'm gonna stick to it. I am extremely, extremely bullish on the stock market up until the middle of March when the Fed no longer gives these banks these easy money loans, buying them back at face value, and it's gonna cause a lot of turbulence. And one other thing that I wanna talk to you guys about, about my, um, we can char ch chart SMCI and uh, ARM, but like I said, coin going to 200, it's inevitable, right? Why is it not just at 200 right now? That, that That's the important question is, if I know that 100%, 99% guarantee that it's going to, two, uh, to $200 a share, well, why isn't it at $200 a share? Well, throughout time, it takes time. People are cycling money. Every day that the market will cycle money. It, it, every trading day is essentially, there's a little bit of, of value investors in terms of value sellers, value buyers, and then there's just a bunch of traders who are attempting to do whatever the value investors and value uh, uh, buyers and sellers are doing. They're, they're attempting to exaggerate the moves. They're, they're trying to skimp the money off of the big guy and, and they make up a large piece of the volume, right? They make, they, they are cycling shares, they're buying shares, they're selling shares, buying shares, selling shares, um, because that's how the money is essentially generated because if, if the stock just instantly appeared at $200, well then there isn't money for these traders to make. Like who bought it up at $200? Who pushed the value of the stock up to $200? Well, it wasn't the value investors because if it was the value investors, they would have just bought at 192, they would have bought lower, so what? It's the traders who have pushed the stock up because it's a very evidence that the flow of money is gonna be consistently over the next period of time into, uh, uh, into these, um, crypto stocks like Coinbase, Marathon, CleanSpark, right? That's why you see this trend up because there's evidence of growth in that sector, evidence that Bitcoin is going up and institutional money flooding into it. Well, when this really starts to take off, now that the institutions have bought, well, they will cycle their money up. They, they're, they're going to trade your stock up um, and then eventually get to a, a high enough point where they where they decumulate their shares because at the end of the day, it's overvalued. Almost every stock in the stock market at, at every point in time will almost always be overvalued. Why? Well, because you're pricing the stock 10 years in advance, right? It just happens to be that every person in the world should theoretically want to buy assets because the dollar is forever deflating. And that's why you buy Bitcoin, guys. Like At the end of the day, if the government's gonna print more money, you have to have something that is not going to print more of itself, not going to, and and whether that's a, a very nice home where you have to A, pay property tax, whether that's crypto where you have to pay the fees to buy and sell it, or whether that's stocks where you, you're having to find value within an overvalued market. Um, and, and so the most important thing about any assets in general is making sure that you realize your profits. Uh, so your profits could, it could go exponentially up, but if you're not the one to, to to take that liquid cash, well, then you really didn't make any money, right? And that's the point, that's why trading is so important, that's why there's so much cycles, and that's why growth investors uh, and will buy the trend, right? This isn't just traders trading the stock up every day. This, this is a new set of investors uh, that have bought this stock um, because they can see that there's an AI growth, right? And 
that is why I'm holding 200 arm shares. Uh, this has been a very nice consolidation zone. Sure, it could break down and drastically tank, but I do not see the semiconductor stocks. I'm talking ARM, I'm talking AMT, I'm talking NVIDIA, I'm talking AVGO, I'm talking SMCI to tank up until uh, NVIDIA's earnings. And NVIDIA's earnings, I, I, I don't know. I, I would like to say they go down. I would like to say they tank. I would like to say that they can't forecast growth and that they're an overvalued company, but I don't know. And, and I'm not going to bet on it because there's going to be a uh, high volatility. Now, maybe will I trade it after the move is being made and I see where the market's going, but I don't see it being a gap up and go. I see it being gap up, sell off and maybe stagnate or it sells and people buy the dip. I, I don't see the valuation changing super drastically over maybe five days post their, their earnings, right? I, I see if it's a buy, it's a sell, and if it's a sell, it's a buy. Um, and for that reason, I believe that there's gonna be a lot of hype, a lot of buyers, a lot of strength in the overall semiconductor market, um, as well as these earnings could definitely bring up the earnings of, uh, of these other stocks. And why am I holding ARM? Do I think it's a, a fair value or good value? No, uh, what I've done is I've bought 200 shares, I've bought momentum, and I get to sell a $140 call for $650. I got two of those. I get to get paid come Monday, or, or I could I could sell it today, I, I'll see what I do. But I, I can sell a call to you for, for two calls for $1,300, that's $10 out of the money above my, my share price and while I'm down on a stock. So I have taken a, a stock that I bought at let's say just a very mid-tier price. It wasn't a great value buy, it wasn't, I bought into momentum. I just bought the stock and it's stagnated. It's basically went flat. And I made $800 or $400 times two. I've made uh, 800 bucks and then I'm gonna sell another two 650s, make another $1,300. So I'll have made $2,100 in two weeks just for holding shares of a company, not buying them for, or selling them for a loss or, or selling them for a profit. I've just hold, held shares and that equity ha has given me 2,100 American dollars. And, and that's just, it's criminal really, right? And that's why stocks can't just, just instantly appear at their prices because of this options market. Lots of times when there's a big move, sure those options make some insane, insane gains, but most of the time, options will just depreciate with time through theta as the price stagnates from previously being volatile. And is there a chance that this stock comes back up and breaks this this 135, 133, 137 resistance point, goes to 140 and just potentially short squeezes once again? Absolutely. We've seen declining volume, yet a strong stock price, which means there is likely going to be a breakout move and, and higher volume. When the trend is up, the trend doesn't all of a sudden go down without news, without earnings, without all this other stuff. It will be bought up. It doesn't matter what the valuation of this company is. It can be the stupidest valuation ever. If there is growth in the company and there's evidence that people are buying it, well, it will continue to be bought, okay? So I'm looking to sell another eight of these. I was thinking about just selling the shares for these and then exercising, maybe picking up 100 Coinbase shares. But the thing is, is these are giving a better percentage per money because it's a more volatile stock right now. They are giving, not that Coinbase isn't volatile, they're both very volatile companies and, and that's why I own them is because I wanna own companies that I can just take five days off and just soak up some premium. That's why I own Marathon Digital. It's one of the most volatile companies on the stock market, which means it has one of the most elevated option prices. And when you have these elevated option prices, if you are selling options, you are cycling free money into your account. You just said, hey, look, it, it, as long as you're selling out of the money options, which still gives you a very, very good premium, you say, hey, look, if, if I make money, you can make that extra money if it really starts to go because I, I've profited, right? And when a stock like this, a highly volatile stock really goes, well, guess what? The next move is likely gonna be down, right? SMCI, uh, I owned a $910 put. It went from 35 cents to $50. Um, and I think it's probably sitting at like uh, 35 right now. So I would have been up massively. I, I just, the momentum was up uh, on the other, on the, let's look at the 30 minutes. 
this is these are the key lines that I was drawing, the the key levels that I was that I had been looking at. And I mean, when you look at this stock, this this stock really has has room to fall the seven forty two next week um, into this seven hundred. This would be the bounce. This would be the run, boom, up and look for it by the bounce down here. But this definitely looks to be coming down. If I was a trader, uh, just the options are ridiculously priced for a weekly, like there's only three hours left in the trading day. Um, and they're, they're trading for thousands of dollars out of the money options, right? Like this is expected to move at least another 50 bucks um, in either direction before close, which is just too ridiculous, right? Um, but definitely from a trader's perspective, short shares looks very good, looks a very good short. Look at what we see right here. We see the 10 crossing the 20 on the 30 minute. It looks very bearish in terms of the short term. Now, anything can happen over the weekend as well as um, anything can happen in the sector, but the chart uh, tells me to sell. And what does that mean? Well, it's telling most likely everyone else to sell too. So uh, when this when this starts to flush past these, these key, uh, uh, support levels and these these key buy zones. Well, everyone who's seen the momentum fade, well, they're just going to sell out of their shares because they no longer want to own them. And, and this isn't just going to instantly drop down to 742. There's going to be sell, buy up, sell, buy up, sell, buy up. Well, why? Because there's everyone else in the market is cycling money into their account, right? So just like SMCI has a very clear evidence short term downtrend, uh, well, if I didn't type in the same ticker symbol as was already up, we can see that that Coinbase has a very clear, we can we can stretch this to the one hour, has a very clear and evident bullish trend, bullish form, and 200 is a very whole number. The market likes whole numbers. It will most likely be bought into 200. The five minute doesn't really matter. We have time. We see it, it, it tested twice off of support, off of this 188 kind of mark, and it has held above it, and it is bullish, right? Um, lastly, checking into Bitcoin before we go for the last video of the week. Um, probably not even gonna make some videos next week. We can see one hourly, we look at the one hourly, very big consolidation zone. And when you have these big consolidation zones in a move up, well, you're just simply waiting for uh, time to pass and then new buyers to, to eat up the sellers and then the next run is ready. But realistically, I really see that this stock, uh, that Bitcoin could easily get to its next phase up of 57,000, 58,000. And if that happens, well, that likely means Marathon Digital's uh, at or above 40, Clean Sparks at or above 23, and, and, our, and Coinbase is at or above 200. As well as the fact that if this is moving uh, extremely um, uh, highly and or, or extremely rapidly, it's moving up quickly and it's very strong and bullish, likely the semiconductor stocks as well as the overall stock market isn't gonna be tanking, right? Like when we saw the PPI get released, we see a slight dip in Bitcoin. Why? Just because the overall fundamentals of inflow and outflow of money, well, they're a little bit scarce. Maybe people need to sell some more uh, because they don't have as much money based on the overall facts of the economy, right? That's what the stock market's trying to price in. And that's why Bitcoin has been going down a little bit when there's been these bearish news, sell the news cycles in terms of the overall stock market. However, um, that being said, even though uh, PPI brought us down today, the S&P 500 has basically rallied towards break even. It has been a buy the dip every single time it has dipped. It looks very strong. It's touching new highs and I don't see a, a reason why next week, like look at the weekly, it's basically gone up every week. Why next week? This is a very nice test the support level can we converge at the $500 mark and start a bearish trend? No, we are not. So I expect this to really start breaking out. Um, there to be some good momentum into the early March and then come March when the bank has, they, when the Fed announces that they're not cutting interest rates um, because they hate uh, American families. No, I'm just kidding. Like there, there's reasons why they're not cutting interest rates because if they start cutting interest rates too quickly, they're going to soak the market up so fast. There's going to be so much money because of what they printed during COVID uh, that the stock market, Bitcoin, all this is just going to hyper, hyper inflate and it's going to destroy any working class person who doesn't own assets. And basically that's what's happened over time. They just don't want it to happen a short period of time because then it's very noticeable, right? If everybody notices that they will lose 
their money and not be able to afford things because they don't own assets um, in, in a short period of time is very evident. Well, then what they're going to do is start buying assets, right? Um, I mean, they want that from people and over time that happens, but they don't want to shock the market. And that's essentially what the Fed is uh, with their interest rate hikes and interest rate drawbacks. When the market is doing the, the consumer market is doing fairly well, well, they don't want to bring an influx of money, so they have high interest rates. And when the overall market is kind of bearish and, and they, they're not new money is coming in, well, they, they give you debt. They give you cheap debt because they want you to, to continue to support their economy. And throughout time, whether you're taking out debt or you're just working and making more money, well, there's an inflow of money in towards the market, in towards these stocks, in towards these sectors, right? That's why theoretically, unless there's a World War Three or, or something crazy, uh, likely stocks will forever go up. There's going to be evident times where you should sell because the thesis will be to sell and the outflow of money is going to be concurrent throughout the next small period of time. But the longer period of time, there will always be more money because of debt. Okay, so remember guys, uh, don't overbuy stocks unless you're attempting to trade them. Don't value invest and buy at highs like an SMCI stock. But there's no reason why you can't buy that stock if you were looking to later then sell it for more, right? You gotta be on your toes. The money, if you're going to, if you wanna take money, there's a lot of free money to be taken in this market. Um, but if you're not if you're not smart, you're making bad decisions, you're, you're, you're being stupid, um, and, and you're not looking at it constantly, ready to make a decision at any given time, well, simply your money will be taken. So, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.